Hello, today we want to talk about how to set up your spreadsheet program if you're entering data anew. So let's begin with a bit, little bit of a thought experiment. So suppose you had 12 participants answering 10 questions and you were to enter that data into a spreadsheet, how would you do it? So pause for a moment and think about how many rows and columns your document will have. Okay, let's see what you have done. You will probably split half between two strategies here, speaking from experience in workshops. Uh, one group of you will probably have a, a document that has 12 rows and 10 columns or 13 rows and 11 columns, depending on whether you count uh, meta information columns and rows. And the other group will have something along the lines of 120 or 121 rows and three columns. So what happened? You probably chose one of two formats. So in the white format or what we call the white format, that is um, 10 columns or 11 columns if you count the column for a subject. And then you have 10 columns with the questions that people answered and perhaps with the score on a Likert scale of some sort. The other option is to choose a long format which means that you have the subject ID in one column and then repeated for every question that the participant answered along with the score. So in working with spreadsheets, we usually say you have one row per observation. Now in corpus linguistics, that's usually the actual hit that you find in a corpus. So that usually comes with one row per observation already. And with survey data, it's a bit more tricky because you would have to think about what is your observation. Is it your participant? That would speak for a wide format. Or is the observation the response by any given participant, which would speak for the long format? Now, it comes with a bit of pros and cons on both sides. The wide format is obviously uh, more compact and in this data set, quite uh, clear. And you could directly do some um, calculation. So if you wanted to have the average score per participant, you could say, I want to um, determine the average from B2 to K2. And that would give you the average for participant one. And if you dragged it down, that would give you the averages per participant. Similarly, you could determine the average per question. B2 to thirteen, and then drag that across and Excel will automatically update the respective um, ranges, right? So that is an advantage for quick and dirty analyses. Um, but there it comes with a bit of a disadvantage. So in the white format, it's quite difficult to add meta information. Now you could add meta information on the part of the participant, right? So you could have additional columns for gender, age, uh, the list that they were given if you had different questionnaire versions and perhaps a block if you presented them in different orders. But what you could not do or not do it very easily in this format is to add information on the question types, for instance. So suppose you had for question one, you had two versions and every other participant would get the other version to get a bit of variety. Then that information cannot be entered here as easily. So that's what you can then do in the long format relatively straightforwardly. So you could enter or add a new column and say um, maybe Q uh, version. Oh, let's keep that consistent. And then say, okay, participant one always got version one. And then perhaps, perhaps participant two got version uh, two of question one. So it, it depends a bit on your ultimate goal. Uh, but more often than not, probably the wide, uh, sorry, the long format is um, more flexible. Uh, it doesn't allow you to calculate averages as easily as you could with the wide format, um, but you will then use pivot tables in, uh, in Excel, which we'll cover in a different uh, clip. And also if you plan to work, especially for larger projects and more advanced statistics, if you plan to work with programs like R, then the long format is always the better option. Having said that, 
Um, many survey tools, such as Google Forms, for instance, they give you the data in a wide format. So you would have to de-aggregate uh, that compact format if you wanted um, a bit of a, a long format and add additional information. You can also do things like that in, uh, in R, but that is quite advanced and probably the topic of another clip or even another tutorial for now. Just keep in mind that we have a difference here between wide and long format and be aware of the consequences that this may have. And also we're going to talk about this a little in later clips is that I tend to not do any analysis in um, my data sheet. So I will do that separately and we're going to um, look into a couple of options of how you can do that. Okay, that's it for now from a more conceptual side and See you later. Bye.